Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead on Forest Time today. We're sitting back out here. Today, guys, we are shelling butter peas. One and I picked six gallons of them things this morning. And that was a blessing. And now comes the work of sitting here hand shelling all these things, which we don't mind that because actually today we have a good breeze blowing. Uh, you might can see it in the trees behind me there. We're thankful for that. We're thankful that we have our butter peas. Uh, being in the midst of the drought situation that we're in here, um, it uh, it makes us thankful to have anything right now. We're not we're not going to be planting anything anytime soon, just simply because it's just dust here. There's no moisture anywhere. We're thankful to have what we have. And I want to talk today about being thankful. Wanda and I went to town the other day, and I think I mentioned this on one of our other videos. Might have been our live stream. We walked in the back door of Walmart, because a lot of times we go in through the plant section, just to look and see what they what they have. I was wanting to get one of some ferns, but evidently there was a wedding or something, and somebody came in and bought every fern that was in there. So. Um, we wasn't able to get the ferns that we wanted for her for her birthday. So I figured we'll get them at another date. But while we were in there, when you go in the back door through the plant section, into Walmart there, as soon as the door is open for us to go into the store, now guys, this is, this was September, the when we went to town, was September the 21st, which was her birthday. I was totally shocked. Everything in Walmart was Christmas. The whole back section of that store, they already had all the trees up, they already had all the decorations out. Um, it, it was just, it just blew me away. And it's the first day of fall, the autumn equinox, the first day of fall. And I went in and I saw that and I looked at one and I said, did I miss something? Halloween hasn't happened. Thanksgiving hasn't happened. And they already have Christmas stuff everywhere. The whole parking lot is full of uh, containers outside for people to start doing layaways. Guys, they totally had nothing to do with Thanksgiving. Nothing. They had decorations out for fall season. Nothing about Thanksgiving. Uh, and it come across me, wow, our nation has now forgot even the one holiday that we had set aside to be thankful for everything in our nation. And we have forgotten it. And as I walked through the store, I found a whole section in the store devoted to Halloween. I mean, there was like four aisles devoted to Halloween. And I was looking for something to do with Thanksgiving. I found one half of an aisle, maybe, I think the section I kind of stepped it off was about 12 foot long and three shelves for fall decorations. And they said, for the fall holidays. No mention of Thanksgiving whatsoever. And it really, really hit home with me at that point. This is where we're at as a nation. We have completely left thankfulness out of everything. And it brought back to remembrance uh, in the Bible, where it talked about in the last days, that men would be lovers of pleasure rather than being lovers of God. I think there's a list of like some 21 things in those verses there. But then it talks about that, that people would be unthankful, unholy. All these things it mentions. Guys, we're there. We have literally decided to not be thankful anymore. And that just, 
that's just not who we are as people here at Deep South Homestead. We try to be as thankful for everything that we can. And it's not, I mean, we have a lot of problems here. Don't get me wrong. We're in the midst of a drought. And we know we've got people saying, oh, there's no drought there. I just pulled up all this data and looked at it from your area down there and there ain't no mention of drought. Well, you know what? Three miles from us, they've got plenty of rain. But right here where we live at, on our hill, it hasn't rained in four weeks and it looks like it's fixing to be five because I looked at the 10-day forecast and they don't even have a chance of rain for 10 more days. I could spin this camera around right now and show you my sugar cane standing right here. It's mostly brown. There's just a little bit of green right in the very top of it. It's because there is no water. There's no moisture. And as much stuff as one that I have, it would be impossible for us to try to water everything we have. Um, we went ahead here the other day and we killed two of our pigs because they were in the swamp bottom down in here. And they... Uh, they were keeping it clean because there was a live stream. I've lived here 30 years this year. There's a stream that's been running down there for 30 years. It's never dried up. It's dry now. There's no water in it anywhere. I mean, used to, you couldn't hardly walk out in there without bogging up knee deep. Now I can drive a tractor out there. That's how bad it is here. But even in the midst of all that, we still have to be thankful for everything that we have here. We have to be thankful that there is no water. Because at some point, we will eventually get rain, I'm sure. Now, what's bothering us is we're losing our fruit trees. These are fruit trees that we have several years growth into. That's not just something that we can put back right away. But guys, even with that, we still have to be thankful. We've canned a good bit of stuff this year. Now, not the quantity that we normally would have, but even with that, we have to be thankful because, guys, the bottom line is this. None of us are promised tomorrow. We're only promised right now. And we're really not even promised that. All we have is right now. We don't take what happened yesterday and add it to today. Because today will have evil sufficient enough for itself, the Bible says. So, there's no reason for me to drag what happened yesterday into today's life. When I wake up in the morning... I'm thankful that I woke up. I put my shoes on in the morning and I pray that I take them off that night. Because I'm not promised anything. The way to true happiness through God is literal to be thankful for everything. Now, we show a lot of things here at Deep South Homestead on YouTube that are challenges that we have here. It's not because we're not thankful. It's because on our channel, we show the good with the bad. And so many of y'all have sent us messages and pictures saying, Danny, I'm so glad that you're showing us some of your failures there at Deep South Homestead, some of your problems at Deep South Homestead, some of your gardening issues at Deep South Homestead because our gardens have all failed this year and we weren't even going to plant anymore because we said it's just we can't do this. But when we see someone like y'all having problems, it gives us hope that it's not just us. And then we have people who send us videos and tell us, wow, I've had the best garden I've ever had. We've had perfect weather. We've had the perfect amount of rain. Our, we have low bug problems. Our gardens are doing wonderful this year. And guys, that's the way it will be. That's called microclimates. There are good microclimates and there are bad microclimates. 
We're in a bad microclimate right now. Three miles from us up the road, they're getting plenty of rain. But because of the hill that we live on here, the rain, a lot of times, there's a creek a quarter of a mile behind me, there's a creek a quarter of a mile in front of me. The rain will run those creeks a lot of times and never rain right here. That's because we live on a hill between two creeks. And then there are times when our weather here is just perfect. And three miles from us, they're struggling. It just depends on the year and how things are going. There's microclimates everywhere. So be thankful for what you have because it could be worse. We could have absolutely nothing. And I'm looking at the, a lot of things going on around this country right now. And it looks a little bleak right now. I see Russia, China, India, all these places doing war games. And that brings a little bit of a concern to me because I see these big communist allies doing, doing war games. Well, when they're doing war games, that means something. They're planning something. And if you know anything about the end of days of an age spoken of in Scripture, you know that there's a lot of wars and rumors of wars in the end time. Guys, I really believe we're there. But in the midst of all of this, God still tells us to be thankful. Just like Israel when it went into captivity in Babylon. The people of Israel was asking God, what do we do? What do we do now that we're in captivity? Because they had not done what the Lord had told them to do with their land. And God told them, he said, build houses and plant gardens because you're going to be here for a while. Probably not what they wanted to hear. But Nevertheless, that was what was told to them. And they had to be thankful because God allowed them to build houses, live in a foreign land, and be able to grow food while they were there. And even though they were in a foreign land and they were growing food, they were still blessed if they were thankful. Guys, that's where we're at today here in this country. There's a lot going on around us right now. It's not all good. In the midst of chaos, we're expected as to be examples. We're, expect, we're expected to be that light that he speaks of. And as a result, if we sit back and we are not thankful, the ones that are supposed to be the light, how will those that don't have the light have hope? So it's up to us to be the ones to carry the torch and to be thankful and to let our light shine and to persevere. It's very, very easy to get discouraged. When you've been out here in the heat, busting your tail, doing the best that you can do to try to have something, and then something like happens here with us. There's no rain for four weeks. There's no rain in sight. We don't have the ability to water everything that we have here. And you just watch it sit there and burn up. You have fruit trees that you've planted years ago. And they're doing so good and so beautiful. And you look out there and all the leaves are turning brown on them. Because they're dying. Because of a lack of moisture. You look at your hog pen like we did. We never had to water our pigs because they had a running stream through their pen. But when the water started drying up, we saw that and we had to butcher both of them at one time because if not, we would have been toting water all the way down to that pig pen there. We're already having to water our cows because the water's done dried up where they were 
we're having to water our pigs in the front because their running stream is dried up. So for us to run water for everything that we have out here would make our water bill be astronomical. So it's just not worth it at this time. We have to trust the Lord and be thankful and pray that He knows what's best for us. And guys, that's what we're doing here. We're sitting over here at our off-grid cabin today. We are enjoying the day. It's very breezy out here. Even though it's hot, it's still breezy, and that takes the edge off of it. We prayed for rain and asked for rain. We haven't gotten it. We prayed and asked for wind to cool the temperatures off, and the Lord has been good enough to give us wind. And for that, we are thankful for. Well, as y'all can see, Ms. Wanda came in, and she sat down with me. She's helping me shell these beans. I'm not sitting here doing this all by myself. She's been sitting <laughs> over there on the steps while I video this. And it was warm on the steps. I had dual purpose. Now she has a dual purpose. The wind is not hitting on the steps over there. It's hitting right here. And we are thankful to have what we have here. We're not begrudging of anything. We're thankful that, that you guys take the time out every day that we put a video up to watch it we thank you for your responses now we have those out there that i don't even know the correct word for them um <laughs> there is no word there is no word for some of these people they i guess they're armchair homesteaders would that be a good way to put it they sit on the couch and think they know couch everything they know everything about homesteading and they're looking at all kind of data on computers and stuff like that thinking if they know what it's like to actually get out here and bust it and do it you know we have tons of those people but those comments usually get taken down uh, because they have they're of no benefit whatsoever they're ignorant they're totally inaccurate sort of kind of like the person that um told us that our sweet potatoes in the fields were rottening in the fields because that was probably the sweet potatoes that we planted. Yeah, that told us immediately that the person that made that comment had no clue about how to grow sweet potatoes. Because sweet potatoes, you don't grow them from potatoes. Sweet potatoes are grown from slips that are grown from potatoes. So, <laughs> yeah, when we see those things, you know, we, we kind of laugh, but at the same time, it's not that we, um, we're not making, We're not fun, making of fun of them like that because there's there, but, there are those out there that actually don't know. And they want, but when people make that type of comment, it's like they're getting on to us on how we think and what we do. Yeah, tell us that we made a mistake, that we didn't do it right when well, we know that we've done it right. Um, the reason ours is rotting, when we pull one of those potatoes up out of our soil, they feel just like they came out of an oven. They're, I had I have no way of checking the temperature of them, but in my hand they feel like they're way over a hundred degrees. And if you slowly put a, if you put a sweet potato in the oven at a hundred degrees and leave it for say four to five days, see if it's not reasonably cooked or mushy. It would almost be cooked to the point where we would start becoming mushy, and I think that's uh, that's a lot of what's happening because our soil here um, is just it's just hot deep. Our cellar is three feet deep underground, the top of it is. And the temperature in our cellar ranges around 80 degrees this time of year, even though it's that deep underground because the top of the ground heats down in there. And when you have air circulating from outside through a cellar that's in the triple digits with 90 some percent humidity and a 75 to 80 percent dew point pulling through that cellar, so you have fresh air moving around in it at all times, the ground temperature cannot overcome that ambient temperature that you're bringing in from outside. So therefore the cellar this time of year usually runs around 80 degrees. And the same thing happens with our soil out here. When you have triple digits now, this is day number 94, I believe it is, since March, I mean, since May the 20th, that we've had triple digit heat indexes here. And Guys, 
when you do that day after day after day after day, the ground, and you don't get any rain to cool the ground off, then what you start facing is your ground temperature begins to heat deeper and deeper and deeper in the ground. And we yeah. have had rain in the last three months, but not a significant enough amount of not rain enough to amount. Not even an inch. do any good yeah. when we get it. Yeah. And in the spring, we had too much rain. Yeah, we had too much this past spring. It rained so hard it ran off. It didn't soak in. Uh, but even in the midst of all this, we try to be thankful for everything that goes on here. And we try to keep our channel as positive as we can. And look at this, guys. These are beautiful. Our butter peas that he had me plant yeah. are doing awesome. Even in this heat, these things are gorgeous, beautiful pink beans. There's going to be a video, I'm uh, pretty sure going to be coming up in the near future, about what we've learned about this year as far as what will grow in this kind of heat, in this kind of drought. What, what produces, what doesn't produce for us, um, what we done that worked that worked and what we done it didn't yeah what we done it didn't work <laughs> so we're going to be working on those videos in the future because we have so many of y'all who make comments and saying i don't know what we've done wrong well it might not be that you've done anything wrong because we're quickly learning that the way that our forefathers gardened going into this weather anomalies that we're having uh, may not work for us. And we that's are, all we knew. Well, that's yeah. That's, that's we all knew. we've always known. We've always done the older way of farming, and it's always worked. But now that we have these different weather anomalies, whether man-made or whether they're just natural, uh, the plants are not responding well to it. So we've got to, as as people here in homesteader, we have to figure out, just like our forefathers had to figure out in the beginning, what works for them in their climate. Now, we've always told y'all what we do here may not work where you're at. And what you do where you're at may not work here. So, that, that much we've learned. Because we live in zone 8B, and I will tell you, you can look, you can look at the calendars, and you can look at what the last frost, frost dates were, the earliest freeze dates, all that kind of stuff, and it's not accurate anymore. It doesn't work. And I'm not trying to be rude or bust a bubble or anything like that. Uh, all the old almanacs and all that stuff, they don't work. With these, with these new weather anomalies that we have going on right now. So, guys, today, we're going to finish shelling these things here. we got a long way to go. we still got a whole five-gallon bucket sitting here in front of me. And we're going to try to get this done. But while I was sitting here shelling butter peas, I was so thankful that we had them with peas that's had no water for four weeks and don't look like they're going to get any more. We just want to praise the Lord. And I told Wanda, I said, you know what? I want to do a porch time. And I want to talk about how thankful we are for what we have. And guys, that's, that's the secret to life to me, is to be thankful. If you want to be blessed, be thankful for what you have. Thank you, guys. Look deep south homestead.